A reading from the book of Job. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Here and I will speak, I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard, that, heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Katzia, and the third Kiran Hapuk. In all the land, there were no women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children, four generations, and Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. We'll read our psalm in unison. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the grace of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. 
the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On their way to Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. And as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving the city, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace to you and peace. Please be seated. Good morning. The miracle of sight. I saw it this week, and you can see it too. There is a video online um, called Piper Gets Piper can see. Piper is an 11 month year old little girl and she has an eye disease which prevents her from seeing very clearly. She sees shapes and all, but that's about it. And so she's sitting, she's 11 months old and sitting in a high chair in this restaurant with her mother and her father and they have just gotten her glasses and they start to put them on her head and she's shaking because she just, this is, what is this? And all of a sudden they get them on her little eyes and she goes, And she sees her mama and hears her voice and associates a face with a voice for the first time. And she smiles and her dad says, Piper, Piper. And she looks at her father and she sees his face and hears his voice together for the first time. And she smiles. There's such joy in really seeing, isn't there? I invite you to go see that. You can see it on YouTube. You can Google Piper Gets Her Glasses. You can go to Facebook, anywhere you want to go and witness Piper seeing for the first time. I am... Um, I want to wrap up Job right, right quick. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, let's just be clear about what happens here at the end. Um, uh, God restores Job. Um, I, I tell you that first because God restores Job um, because God is just, and that's what God does. Restoration is who God is. So God restores Job, but not without some exchange first. As you heard, remember last week, God speaks out of the whirlwind to Job and says, who in the world are you to be talking to me about the mysteries of life? And then Job today is a little more humble than he has been in, in, in his in his arguments with God, and he says, oh, you know, as you mention it, I believe you have a point. Um, I can't see everything. I don't know everything. Things are too wonderfully hidden. It's a wonderful little Hebrew word. Too wonderfully hidden for me 
to see. And there's a wonderful little line in there um, in, in, in the Hebrew Bible that we translate, and uh, Job's, Job, Job despised himself and was comforted um, concerning dust and, and ashes. Um, that's all. Hor horrible translation. <laughs> um, it, in fact, nobody knows what a good translation is, but that's not a good one. Um, it, 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 in, in Hebrew, it looks more like, and Job stepped back and was comforting concerning dust and, and ashes. In other words, Joseph up, in, Joseph, Job up until this point has had sort of a myopic, nearsighted view of the world. Everything and life itself, everything was about him and how he was. And that's all he can see. And now that God has reminded him of the wonderfully hidden from him, he is able to step back and to see things in a broader view and to be comforted, comforted concerning dust and ashes. A wonderful metaphor for who knows what. Perhaps it's the human condition. Perhaps it's the mystery of life. Perhaps it's the fact that you and I will return to dust one day, dust and ashes, something that we hear at every funeral service and just about every denomination there is. Job finally is able to step back, take a broader view of things, and be at peace with God. He sees, finally, for the first time, that life is bigger than he is. The world is bigger than he is. It's not about him. There are uh, three wonderful stories in the Gospels about blindness. Three. There are more than that, but there's three I want to focus on this morning because um, those three come from uh, the first one from John's Gospel and the other two from Mark's Gospel, and Matthew and Luke just stole from the two of them. So anyway, we won't go into them. Um, in John's Gospel, there is a story of the man who was born blind, and he is healed by Jesus, which is no surprise because you know the miracle's coming. What's surprising is nobody believes him. I was healed by this man named Jesus. No, you weren't. We don't, we don't believe you. I was healed by Jesus. I told you I was healed. No, we, we don't believe you. The point is, is that we have a difficult time. We believe it impossible that we can see that anyone can see clearly, that anyone could step back, take a broader view, and appreciate the wonderful hiddenness of all that is. We don't believe it can happen. It's the point of the gospel story, perhaps. Other story, the first story of blindness in Mark is the healing of the blind man from Bethsaida. Now, you won't ever hear this story in church because it never comes up in our Sunday lectionary. In fact, if you, when you read your daily lectionary yesterday, as I'm sure you all do every day, you would have gotten this story. You would have heard the story of, of the blind man from Bethsaida, which you all know now because you read it yesterday. Right, right. The blind man from Bethsaida is the one, you know the story though anyway, even though we don't do it on Sundays, um, is the man who Jesus spit on his finger and rubbed his eyes and he asked, Jesus asked the man if he can see, can you see? I see people, but they look like trees. And then Jesus lays his hands on him again and he can see clearly. It's the only miracle where Jesus has to do over, you know what I mean? None, no, nonetheless, the point is, is that the, the bringing on of sight, the miracle of sight, does not always happen in an instance. Perhaps, perhaps we need a little training in it. Perhaps we need a couple of miracle do-overs in order for us to see clearly. The third story is the one we hear this morning. Now, the funny thing about these two stories in Mark, the blind man from Bethsaida and, and healing blind Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, there's no accident that blind and beggar are put together. The point is, is no, we can't all see, and yes, we are all beggars. Blind beggars, we are all. In blind, the, blind, the blind Bartimaeus and uh, blind man from Bethsaida and blind Bartimaeus actually book in all of Mark that we've been hearing for the last eight weeks. The story of discipleship begins with blindness. The story of discipleship in Mark ends 
with the miracle of sight ending blindness. Now, the connection that we need to make here, and one that connects the John story to the first blind Mark story, is that Jesus, Jesus, John is all but saying, we don't believe that we can see. And he picks that up, Mark's gospel, picks that up and says, Jesus has, is said, says in this gospel, um, it's because of your hardness of heart that you can't see. In other words, you don't believe it either. Do you not have eyes with which to see? Go, go to Mark. Go to chapter 8 and read it so you won't think I'm lying about it. It's because of your hardness of heart. Our hardness of heart that we cannot see. There is a wonderful, wonderful line in, Jew- in Jewish rabbinic tradition that says this, all are assumed to be blind until God opens our eyes. All are assumed to be blind until God opens our eyes. Which Jesus does again, yet again. Opens blind Bartimaeus' eyes. But the thing is, he never touches him. Interesting, is it not? Never lays a hand on him. All he says to him is what? You know it. Go. Your faith has made you well. Don't ever forget those words. Your faith has made you well. Um, I mentioned last week, uh, and I, and I want to continue to mention that we are um, we are working on in, in this congregation uh, core patterns of faith. Um, which is why I ask you um, uh, uh, four weeks ago now to begin reading the letter to, to, to the Hebrews. And, and I, I, have been, um, I have been quite comforted by the fact that many of you are having difficulty with this and are expressing your difficulties to me. At least I know you're reading it. Um, I'm comforted also that your difficulties say something to me that says to me that you are actually paying attention to what you're reading because it is damn hard. It is hard. All of it. The whole book, letter to the Hebrews is difficult to understand. It takes practice and commitment and prayer and trust to see where God is going with us. We are practicing the core patterns of faith and reading Scripture. We are beginning, as I said last week, to come up on a time of the year when we consider and pray about ourselves, our community, as stewards. In just a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks from today, actually, we will commission our callers to make calls to a, a fellow steward will call you and, you, and will say, um, please, open your eyes, my words, not theirs, they may not say this, and take a look, step back, Take a look and see the possibilities, not just for yourself as a Christian steward, but for all of us as a community. And that same question is carried further. We're not just, it's not just about us and our community, it's also perhaps more so about who we are in the world and how we engage the suffering and the needs of the world. Core patterns of faith do not allow us to, one, not read Scripture, two, not be generous, and three, not engage in the world. This is our work, to practice these things, even if it happens incrementally. It's a wonderful line in a book um, from that's just, just been released. Uh, it was written by Andy Doyle, Andy Doyle's Bishop of, Texas, of the Diocese of Texas. Um, he says, the problem with blindness is this. The problem is, the more we don't look, the more we don't practice looking, the harder and harder it becomes to see the kingdom at hand and to see God's work in the world. The more we don't look, the harder it becomes to see. The 
this little girl who had her glasses on for the first time, 11 months old, a child, can show you the miracle of sight. We are, each of us, on our way to that miracle. God is restoring, healing us. Open your eyes and see. And when you see, you will hear words. I, I don't want to. I don't want to put religious experience on any of you, but I, you will hear words in one form or fashion. You will hear these words. When you see, you will hear. Go. Your faith has made you well. Amen. If you'll please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. God, strengthen your church with confidence to share the gospel throughout the world. Lord, have mercy. Hear the cries of the needy and lift up the downtrodden and lowly. Lord, have mercy. Bless and sustain the works of your hands and restore your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lead and guide our nation and its leaders in justice and truth. Lord, have mercy. Be present with the suffering in their waking and their sleeping. Lord, have mercy. Give to the dying the hope of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We, all, we pray also for members of the U.S. Armed Forces and their families, especially Walter, Glenn, Nick, Doug, Michael, Alex, Mary, and Micah. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, remembering today the Anglican Church of Japan and their bishop 
And we pray for the churches of Colorado, especially St. James Church in Meeker, St. Luke's Church in Denver, St. Matthias Church in Monument, St. Paul's Church in Montrose, the Parish of St. Gregory in Littleton, and Evergreen Christian Outreach. Please join me in affirming our vision statement. The mission of St. Paul's Episcopal Church is to live out the love of God as seen in Jesus Christ. We will, with God's help, discover God's presence in word and sacrament, share God's word, nurture God's people, encourage congregational and personal growth on our shared journey, and act justly and peaceably. O oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of all sufferers, mercifully accept our prayers and grant that we, your servants, grant us, your servants, the help of your power, that our blindness may be turned to sight, our sickness turned to health, and our sorrow turned to joy. All through your Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We pray to you, O oh God, for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, Jesus Christ our Lord. May Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And 